Why do you do what you do? To see what will happen. Some programs you, you cannot predict, right? You cannot predict how they're going to end. You have to run them. Well, you know, I believe that truth will save the world. I believe that. So you speak truthfully and you watch what happens and you take your consequences. You know, and maybe you hope and have some faith that in the final analysis, things will work out in your favor, but perhaps they will and perhaps they won't, but that's faith, eh? That's faith. It's faith isn't believing in things you regard as ridiculous, sacrificing your intellect. It's a decision, you know? Will truth, beauty, and love save the world? Well, you can find out. Everywhere I go now, it doesn't matter where I land in what airport or if I walk down the street, three or four people will come up to me and they'll tell me, I was in a dark place, I was anxious, depressed, nihilistic, drug addicted, alcoholic, homeless, in jail, you name it. Bad relationship with my girlfriend, bad relationship with my parents. I've been watching your lectures or reading your book. I've been trying to tell the truth and get my life together and everything is way better. And so then you think, well, if you could have what you wanted and what would be meaningful, you imagine you could go anywhere in the world and people would come up to you that were strangers and tell you that. That's well, as good as it gets. People have been after me for a long time by, because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You now, what a terrible thing to do that is. I thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's very difficult to understand how demoralized people are. And certainly many young men are in that category. And you get these casual insults, these, these incels. It's, what do they mean? It's like, well, these men, they're, they don't know how to make themselves attractive to women who are very picky and good for them. Women, like, be picky. That's, that's your gift, man. Demand high standards from your men. Fair enough. But all these men who are alienated, it's like, they're lonesome and, and and they don't know what to do, and everyone piles abuse on them. I don't usually think about these things, but I was, I was after my talk last night, and so all these people line up, and you know, they have their 15, 15 seconds with me, and they're kind of tentative. They're excited and attentive when they come up to talk to me, and then they have you know, 15 seconds of time to tell me something. I'm really listening to them, and they're hesitant about whether or not to share the good news about their life, you know? And I think it's often because when people share good news about their life, People don't necessarily respond positively. No, they don't get encouragement. And people need so little encouragement. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And so they'll tell me something good, and I'll be, God, that's so good. You know, somebody says, oh, I'm getting along way better with my father. I hadn't seen him for 10 years, and now we get along. It's like, God, great. Yeah. And then the, the power of that, you can't overstate the power of that for individuals to get their life together. The individual is an unbelievably powerful force and every single person who gets their act together a little bit has the capacity to spread that around them. Mm. It's, it's a chain reaction and so it's a lovely thing to see. Wherever I go in the world people come up to me and they're usually, I wouldn't say they're happy to see me. They're often in tears, you know, and they often have a pretty rough story to relate. You know, they were suicidal or nihilistic or homicidal or trapped, desperate, you know, and they tell me that real fast. And then they say, I've overcome that to a large degree and thank you for that. And, and you think, well, that's really something to have that happen over and over. In some ways you might think, well, how could anything better possibly happen to you? and to have people come up to you all over the world, strangers, and open themselves up like that, like they're old friends, so quickly. But at the same time, it's an awful thing because you see, even in the revelation of their triumph, the initial depth of their despair. So I wouldn't change that, but it's not nothing. And it's certainly not just happiness. It's better than happiness, but it's almost unbearable. It's really something to see constantly how many people are dying for lack of an encouraging word. Mm. 
And how easy it is to provide that if you're careful. You know, give credit where credit is due. And to say, you're a net force for good if you want to be. And then the other thing that people say, and this is more like three quarters of them, is that they say, I was in a very dark place. I was addicted. I was, I was drinking too much. I had a fragmented relationship with my fiance and I wasn't getting married. Uh, things weren't going very well with my family. My relationship with my father was damaged. I didn't have any aim. I was wasting my time. Some variant of that, some combination of those. And they said, well, I've been watching your lectures. I've decided to establish a purpose. I'm trying to tell the truth and things are way better. What is your end game? What do you want? That's all. That's what I want. I want, I want to help as many individuals as possible become more courageous, more truthful, and more engaged in the pursuit of individual, familial, and social harmony. That's what I want.